I want to tell you about a few of the books I've selected and some of these are my current staff picks so if you come in in the month of November you'll get your 20% discount on Country Bookshop staff picks. The first book I want to tell you about is by Jody Pico who is an author that you may have heard of before um, and I've been on a search this year my mission has been to find books that are different. I know everybody says that but I've really been looking for books that don't follow a theme. They don't follow the theme of it's a story you haven't heard of from World War II or she's 50 years old and now she's trying to figure out who she is in the world. I've been trying to find some books that just go away from those themes um, and go a completely different direction. And this is one of those. So this is Jodi Pico's The Book of Two Ways. It's the story of Dawn Edelston and you meet her as she is waking up from being in a plane crash. She survives and you know she was holding the hand of the person next to her and you don't know anything about what's going on or why she's on the plane. But the story goes forward from there. And as it turns out, Dawn is an Egyptologist or was an Egyptologist before she uh, took a time away from the job to raise her daughter. And she was writing a master's thesis on the Book of Two Ways, which is a book that's found or some directions that are found in the bottom of the um, tombs of some of the pharaohs. And the Book of Two Ways talks about the fact that the worlds follow parallel universes and sometimes you end up one direction and sometimes you end up another and sometimes those ways connect. And that's what happens in this story. You get Dawn's story of her life with her husband Kevin and with their daughter as they're raising her and the things that are going on with them. And you also get Dawn's story with Wyatt and Armstrong who was the person she worked with when she was an Egyptologist. And this, it's not clear where the stories all fit together or how they all fit together, but that is the beauty of this book, is figuring all of that out and seeing where it goes. Book of Two Ways by Jody Pico. Incredible fun. Takes you to Egypt. You can't get on a plane to go there, so get on a book to go there instead. Following along my same theme of let's talk about something different, I've also really gotten into translated literature. Uh, Europa Books is sort of the the premier publisher in the United States for books that are translated and this is Freshwater for Flowers. It was translated from the French. The story here is you meet a woman named Violette and you know Violette is very happy doing what she's doing and she is a caretaker in a graveyard. She's fine, people come, she shows them where their relatives are buried, she, men, she cares for the flowers, she cares for her cottage. And she's great and fine and everything is wonderful until one day a man named Julian Sewell comes to bury the ashes of his mother in the cemetery. And you find out that Julian's mother had a connection with Violette's life. And you get to meet the two of them as they begin to figure out what it is that they need to figure out about their connection and why his mother asked her ashes to be buried in the cemetery where Violette is a caretaker. This is a lovely wonderful book and it would transport you to France and I really enjoyed the ride of Freshwater for Flowers. If you enjoyed Daisy Jones and the Six last year, a story about a band, you may also enjoy Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell. So Utopia Avenue is a story of a band. It's a band you've never heard of but that you know already. It's the strangest British band you'll ever know. Um, and you, the book begins as you meet Dean Hughes a young man walking down the street of England and uh, he sees someone who has been um, injured and he stops to help the man and he has the money in his back pocket to pay his rent and so he stops to help this man and as it turns out it's all a scam. He loses his money, he loses his apartment because he can't pay his rent and he is completely down and out. So he reaches out to some friends he's known before and that ends up being the first step on a road to create the band Utopia Avenue. It's a really fun book. As you read through the chapters, the chapter headings are, the chapters are titled after song titles for each one of the songs on their albums. And the main character in each one of the chapters is the one who ends up writing the song that is written, that is the title chapter. So lots of fun, Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell. If you've read David Mitchell before, you may have read The um, Autumn of Dave, of Jacob Dezette. And Jacob Dezette's great-grandson is one of the characters in, in Utopia Avenue. He's one of the band members. So Jasper Dezette shows up here. 
My last fiction book is The Curious Life of Addie LaRue. This is a book I found uh, early on this year, and as it turns out, it is impossible to get. We are almost out. The publisher is almost out. This has become one of the most popular books of the year, and again, it does what I was looking for. It takes you somewhere completely different. So the story starts in 1714 France, and you meet a girl who is... Um, she's about 25 years old as the story really begins, and her name is, of course, Addie LaRue. And Addie LaRue is an old maid at 25, and her parents are dying for her to get married, and Addie is her own self. She hangs out with the medicine woman in their town. She's really interested in learning about plants and about animals and about nature, and she really just doesn't need anyone. She's all her own but her parents are determined that she must get married. So Addie does the very last thing she can think of, and she goes out into the night as the sun is, is, is falling, and she makes this plea. She says, I don't want to belong to someone else. I want to be free to find my own way, to love or to be alone. I do not want to marry, and I want more time. And as it turns out, someone hears her, and Addie makes a deal, and the deal gives Addie everything she wants. It gives her more time. The book continues into current day, 2020, and it gives her freedom from everyone. Freedom from everyone. No one can remember meeting Addie. She can meet you and talk to you for hours and hours, walk out the door and walk back in, and you never remember you've met her. So imagine that. She can't hold down a job, no one remembers hiring her. She can't have a boyfriend. No one remembers meeting her. So what does that do to someone after 200 years? Well, one day, Addie meets someone who does remember her, and that's when the story begins to change. Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, I absolutely loved it. I do want to talk about one more fiction book, and this is a book we don't have in stock at the moment. We're waiting for it to restock, but I didn't actually read it anyway. I listened to it. I listened to it on a company that we use called Libro FM. It is a, a, basically an independent bookstore for audiobooks. There are humans on the other end, and if you have an issue with it, you might say, I have Audible already. Have you ever had trouble with your Audible? Kimberly's going to show you a little more, Libro FM. If you had trouble with your Audible and you try to fix everything, you can't find anyone to help you fix it. But if you use Libro FM, there's a human on the other end. And the book I read, Kimberly mentioned some of her books were a little odd. This one's incredibly odd. It's called The Hollow Places. And it's so odd that it actually takes place in the Christian bookstore just down the street. Have you ever been in the Creation Museum? We had an author here, Ursula Vernon, who's writing for adults under the name of T. Kingfisher. And Ursula was here for a kid's book. And when she was here, she was waiting to do her presentation and she had about an hour, so she strolled the town and she went in the Creation Museum and that inspired this book. So um, Hollow Places proposes that the Christian bookstore, Creation Museum, just down the street from us, is a portal to another world. And that's where that book starts. Super fun, absolutely hilarious, um, mild horror. It was really a great another place for me to go that's just a completely different place. I have one nonfiction book to talk about. This is Art Curious. I listened to a couple of podcasts and one of them is called Art Curious. And it is um, done by the curator, a curator of the North Carolina Art Museum, Jennifer Dassel. And Jennifer is really interested in all of the odd stories, all of the interesting stories, all of the side stories about different pieces of visual art on her podcast. She goes into a lot of those things. And then this is Art Curious. And it is stories of the odd, curious, or interesting things about visual art. So if you're interested in art, I know I am, you might check out Art Curious.